If you have your Bibles with you, we'd ask that you turn to the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 13, and we're going to begin reading in verse 10. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 13, beginning in verse 10. The Bible says, This evil people, which refuse to hear my words, which walk in the imagination of their heart, and walk after other gods and do serve them, and to worship them, shall even be as this girdle, which is good for nothing. For as the girdle cleaveth to the loins of a man, so have I caused to cleave unto me the whole house of Israel and the whole house of Judah, saith the Lord, that they might be unto me for a people and for a name and for praise and for glory, but they, w but they would not hear. Therefore, Thou shalt speak unto them this word. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Every bottle shall be filled with wine, and they shall say unto thee, Do we not certainly know that every bottle shall be filled with wine? Then shall thou say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will fill all the inhabitants of this land, even the kings that sit down upon David's throne, and the priests and the prophets, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with drunkenness. And I will dash them, and I will dash them one against another, even the fathers and the sons together, saith the Lord. I will not pity, nor spare, nor have mercy, but destroy them. Hear ye, and give ear. Be not proud, for the Lord hath spoken. Give glory to the Lord your God before he calls darkness and before your feet stumble upon the dark mountains. And while you look for light, turn, he turn it into the shadow of death and make it gross darkness. I'd like to preach the Lord being my helper this morning home before dark. Mm. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your gracious word. Lord, we thank you and praise you that for everyone that's here because we know that they're here by your divine purpose and no happen chance and no, and no one's free will brought them here, but by your grace and mercy we've gathered again to look into your word. God, we pray that we would be home before dark. We pray these things in the sweet and the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Now, Jeremiah was the last prophet to speak uh, before Israel would go into captivity. And he warned them, and he warned them, and he warned them, and he warned them again. Now, we live in a day just like of Jeremiah, where God's men, if they're faithful to the word of God, they're warning, and they're warning, and they're warning. Uh, now, preaching man, Jared, it's not a place to get off, but you'll feel like getting off. Right. It, it's a day when you want to say, well, fully on it, I'm done. I, I'm not going to do it anymore. We, we live in a day, supposedly, you can't figure out who you are, that you don't know uh, what gender you are, whether well, ain't but two, you're one or the other. Yeah. And, and you know, when you live in such an evil day as we've arrived at, it does get discouraging. Now, some people will try to lie and say, well, no, it's, been, it's better than it's ever been. No, it's not. It's worse than it's ever been. Uh, the Bible is very clear, and I think it's either uh, Thessalonians or Timothy, he said things will wax worse and worse. He did not say that they would improve. And when the world is so strong and so compelling, God's people get discouraged. Uh, you can say what you will, but that, that, that is the genuine truth, or at least I do. And I think from Jeremiah's text, I believe Jeremiah did too, that Jeremiah knew uh, that judgment was coming and no one would listen. Uh, he knew that uh, Israel would fall as a nation and no one cared. No, no one, no one, well, you know, 
God has to show us sometime, and then we realize. Now, I want to go all the way back up to the first verse so we can kind of get the context of what the latter verses are about. So in the first verse, the Bible says, Thus saith the Lord unto me, Go get thee a linen girdle, and put it upon thine loins, and put it not in water. Now, uh, linen uh, is a very expensive fabric. You don't see it m that much anymore. We have a cotton-based system that mostly has uh, 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 where well, your sheets and your blankets and stuff like that are made out of. But uh, those type of things, it's 50% cotton and 50% polyester, are very cheap things. Uh, we don't know much about true linen in the United States because of the cost. But it was very, very expensive cloth. Now, within you lies a never-dying soul that has no price. Uh, uh, it, 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 is, it is the only thing that you have in this life. When it's said and done, that's all you have. As me and Brother Jarrett was working on his mother's roof, uh, there was some soft spots. Uh, and we were working along around them, and, and we were talking about, and you know what? This occurred to me as we were working. It'll probably, when we get the metal on, that'll do Jared's mother for the rest of her life. And you know, if the roof caves in after that, what difference does it make? Right? Jared's mother will be home to be with the Lord. She doesn't need a roof anymore. And, and, and so we see that as <laughs> Jeremiah is writing, he takes something, and, and it's a very precious thing, especially in those days. Verse 2, your soul is the only precious thing you have. Verse 2, so I got a girdle, and I love that, uh, immediate obedience to the Lord. You know, uh, we live in a day even the redeemed don't have immediate obedience. They think about it and contemplate it and pray about it. You know, uh, if God has led you to do something, there's no need to ponder about it. Do it. So as soon as he says, you go get you one of those nice girdles, and, and, and ladies, it's not a girdle like we wore in the 60s. Uh, a girdle then was just one that went, it, it was a band, really, and it went around and... Uh, they, they wore robes, and it was just a band that went here. And you know what the real purpose of? It was to signify that you were a man, just like these do. And uh, that's, that was the reason for, her, for them to do this. And so it wasn't an unusual request, because most people wore them in that time. But you see the, the sweet obedience that Jeremiah had. So I got a girdle according to the word of the Lord and put it on my loins. Did exactly what he said he, said he was assigned to do. Verse 3, and the word of the Lord came unto me a second time. You know, how gracious and good. You think about the obedience. What did obedience do for Jeremiah? It immediately led to God spoke to him again. You know, we live in a day and age and we wonder, well, why don't I hear from God? Well, did you do the last thing he told you to do? Maybe, maybe you'll hear from him when you become an obedient child. And so he uh, gives Jeremiah this unusual, really unusual command, go get you, go get you a, a, a piece of linen, go get you uh, that strap that you need. And he does it, and immediately he speaks to him again. That, that sweet fellowship between you and the Lord. And the word, of the, and the word of the Lord came unto me the second time, saying, Take the girdle that thou hast gotten, which is upon thy loins, arise, go to, you, to the to Euphrates, and hide it there in a hole of the rock. Now, I'm not much, as you can see. I, clothes don't mean a whole lot to me. Uh, I'm glad to be covered up, and I, I want to be modest, but as far as what they look like, I don't really care. <laughs> now, ladies, y'all have more of an interest in those kinds of things, and you get you a new skirt or a new blouse. And think about the command. Got a brand new dress. I want you to go dig a hole and put that dress in the hole that you dug. 
and, and, and do it on the uh, river Euphrates. So eventually it's going to be underwater. The Euphrates is just like the Cumberland. It goes up and down, up and down. And you could be assured it's going to, you know, how, how many of us would be obedient to that? Now, gentlemen, we don't care much about our clothes, but what about a nice truck? You take that truck you were commanded to get and drive it off in the Cumberland River. Yeah. That's what I want you to do. See, the, the Lord gives us very unusual requests. And, and the real thing is a testing of your faith. Amen. Amen. How much do you really believe me? How much are you really obedient to what I have to say? Now, we'll find that uh, uh, Jeremiah is cut above and he does it immediately. He does a question, say, hey man, that's a new that's a new linen girdle. I just got my ephod put in it, and, and it's really nice. What are you talking about? He's not like that at all. He's obedient to it uh, and does exactly what the Lord said. So I went and hit it in and hit it by the Euphrates as the Lord commanded me. And it came to pass after many days. Now uh, in my own Bible, I, I'm an underliner. I, I have that many days underlined. You're not going to hear from God every day. Even in good, sweet fellow, you know, that's what makes the Word of God precious, is it not? When he speaks to our heart. Now, the written word of God is extremely precious. And what a blessed nation we are as English-speaking people to have the full counsel of God in our own language. But when he makes it a living word, when he uses the Holy Ghost to make that word extra special to us, that don't happen every day, or at least it don't to me. But after many days... When you're in one of those dry spells, and listen, the whole nation of Israel in the days of Jeremiah and Ezekiel, they were in a mess. They did not hear from God. And those dry spells get rough, don't they? They make you weak. They make you begin to wonder about things. And, and we see, even though it was a dry spell, Jeremiah was waiting, listening knowing the Lord would speak again soon. You, you know, you ever, uh, do you ever get excited about thinking about the soon return of the Lord Jesus Christ? <laughs> you know, uh, uh, I don't think we look for him enough. Now, this way is back to the east. And uh, there's some clouds out there. Uh, is that the cloud he's coming back on? See, we don't think of, we don't think like that much, do we? Uh, you remember, uh, I think it was uh, the prophet uh, Elijah, and it was in the day of drought. We live in a day of drought. And he began to pray, and he said to his servant, uh, and said, go look at the sky. And he, he went and looked at the sky and said, Elijah, there's nothing. And he prayed again, and he says, boy, go look at the sky. There's nothing. There's nothing. And it's nothing and nothing and nothing. And then on the seventh time, he says, Master, there's cloud about the size of a man's hand. Yeah. And he says, get to the house. It's fixing to rain. <laughs> and, and, and so we don't have that faith. Uh, we're like the Hazi, which was that man, that prophet servant. We just kind of wait and wait. But we see these two individuals uh, were excited when the Lord began to answer. They began to be interested. And so after many days, he, he says, And it came to pass after many days that the Lord said unto me, Arise, go to the Euphrates, take the girdle from thence, which I commanded thee to hide there. And I went to the Euphrates, and I digged, and I took the girdle from the place where I'd hid it, and behold, the girdle was marred, and it was profitable for nothing. Yeah. Now, that's complete depravity. That, that is until the Lord digs us up 
And even after he digs us up and you take a good long look, we're good for nothing. That's right. If there was a decision to be made, you know what? We make the wrong one. That, that, that's the true depravity of man. If, if, if we could, if it was even within our ability to choose Christ, we wouldn't. You know why? Because we're wicked and ungodly and full of the filth of this world. Yeah. That, that, that's why. What, what did he say to uh, Nicodemus? Nicodemus, you must be born again. What did you contribute to your birth? You didn't know your mom and dad then, right? What did you? Nothing. There was no request saying, I'd love to be born on December 19th of 68 if that works for you, mother and dad. Right? It's an impossibility. And no more is the impossibility for us to be, to, 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 that, that desire doesn't exist in man, that he, he makes us alive. And then we cry out to him. When, when Donna delivers a child, you don't cry before it's delivered. When it's delivered, she gets a little pop. And whoa, right? Amen. So, but so it is with us. So he picked up his garment and says, that's a useless piece of junk. <laughs> and that's how, that's how we are without grace. That's, right. that's how we are if Christ doesn't intervene. That's how we'll remain if he doesn't intervene. And so we see that... Uh, I mean, excuse me, that Jeremiah got a very good glimpse at what the Lord was speaking about. Verse 8. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Thus saith the Lord, After this manner will I mar the pride of Judah and the great pride of Jerusalem. Now, we, uh, we live in a day which is very much unlike unto this. The Jews were proud of who they were. Well, I'm from the tribe of Benjamin. Well, I'm from the tribe of Judah. And back and forth, their spiritual pride would go on and on. They didn't realize that they were marred. And I've even seen Baptists do that. Well, I'm independent Baptist. I, I'm a sovereign gracer. Well, if you are, the grace of God that made you that way wasn't nothing for you to brag about, right? And we see that more and more. Now, in the modern day, what religion, and I use that, what Christianity, I use that very, very loosely, is growing hand over fist over fist over hand. And that is this praise and worship. You know what it looks like? It looks like a rock concert from the 80s. That's what it looks like. Mm -hmm. And so, just as they're prideful in that, he said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you, I'm gonna take you down. I'm gonna show you what pride's about. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring you down to nothing. Our poor, ungodly nation, very same way. Look at end time prophecy. There's nowhere in end time prophecy that America even exists. So what, what for the near time coming, what does that mean? I guess we'll go out of existence. And you know why? We'll leave our existence because of our pride. Because of what we've done. Because we, take, we let ungodly sodomite people in and, and read to our kindergartners. God help us. Well, that's one of the million reasons I homeschool, is I don't want my children around that. And, and, and so as we, we go along this way, we see certainly the United States of America ha, has, has hallmarks uh, of, the, of the divided nation, of uh, the northern and southern tribes, and, and we see that we are reliving this even today. The, verse 8, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, Thus saith the Lord, After this manner, like the filthy, muddy uh, garment, will I 
uh, will I mar the pride of Judah and the great pride of Jerusalem? We have nothing to revel in. Uh, verse 10, this evil people which refuse to hear my words. Now, every one of us are the same way, right? We like, we, we like some of the word of God. Man, you can get people doing cartwheels talking about the in, in, eternal security of the believer. Man, they, oh, wow. I mean, they're glad about it, right? But when you get down to the point, God foreknew you, and that's the only reason you're anything, the woo-hoo stops, <laughs> right? <laughs> when, when you flip over in Corinthians and it says, come out among them and be separate, Thus saith the Lord. You don't get a lot of jumping jacks on that one either. You see what I'm saying? That was the pride of Israel. And unfortunately, that's the pride in the modern day. We like to pick and choose. Another one we don't, we're not really excited about, by their fruits you will know them. You know what comes up on the house? That, that's one thing about the stupid gender identity. They're trying to question what God did. Out there, or our guest, that's a peach tree. Now, look at it in the spring, because by the middle of the summer, they're gonna be gone. The squirrel gets our peaches. But I know it's a peach tree because I've eaten from it. I know it's a peach tree because it blossoms and peaches come out. That's pretty easy to understand, isn't it? And a girl and a boy, are easy to understand, are they not? You know, they're not just questioning gender, they're questioning the Almighty. That's what they're doing. And, and, and so we see in, in a day that the tribes of Israel were like that, even so the United States of America ha, ha, has arrived at this same place. And always the result is judgment. Thus saith the Lord, verse 9, After this manner will I mar the pride of Judah and the great pride of Jerusalem, this evil people which refuse to hear my words. Christians, preaching men, teachers, uh, sharing the gospel in Walmart, all of you under the sound of my voice, they, they're going to refuse to hear it. Don't be discouraged by that. They're not going to do jumping jacks. But it doesn't get us off the hook. Go ye therefore into all nations. Teach, preach, teach. That's how the commission goes in Matthew 28. Uh, and we're still to do that. We're to do it knowing probably there, it's going to be few and far between. We live in a day of gleaning, not in a day of the initial harvest. And so we're to do it. Hear my words, <laughs> which walk in the imagination of their heart. Now, this flesh is wicked completely. And it will imagine to do worse and worse. Don't listen to this world. Don't listen to what they have to offer. Don't listen to their advice. You know why I grew my hair out in the 80s? But because my beautician, and I did, it was a beauty, it was a beauty parlor. It wasn't no barber like my boy. I've been better off to go with one like that. Because she said it would look good. I listened to the bull's advice. And, and, and so are we today. Uh, the more we imagine things and go with it, the worse we're going to be. The more we think, oh, that would be that would be interesting to watch, the more wicked our world becomes. Do not trust this flesh, not even for a moment. And, and so we find that as the as he pronounces judgment against Israel and says, This is the problem, this is the difficulty. You will be judged because of what you do. And they walk after other gods. 
Now, we think idolatry is not that big of an issue in the United States of America. We've convinced ourselves that we are a Christian nation. No, 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 my friend. We're not a Christian nation. There's some Christian people here, but we're not a Christian nation. Don't deceive yourself in that. Our gods are our gods. Our gods are our automobiles. Our gods are, are doing what we think is best. Our gods is getting advice from other people. Those are our gods. We think of false gods as Buddha uh, and bowing down and worshiping that. No, no. Anytime we follow something and, and, and follow advice and follow standards more so than we follow the Lord, that becomes our God. Right. Uh, what I've seen among men particularly, be careful of your job because it can be easily become your God because that's where you get your money. And, and, and so we find that as Paul, I mean, excuse me, as Jeremiah is writing, he puts them specifically to the problems at hand and do worship them. They have gods, they worship him. Shall even be as this girl, which is good for nothing. So their lives are marred by idolatry. They're just like the girl. Verse 11. For as the girdle cleaveth to the loins of a man, so have I caused to so have I caused to cleave unto me the whole house of Israel. Now I want you to see our God is good and our God is patient, but his patience does run out. He's much more patient than we are, but his patience do run out. Uh, thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ because he's even more patient than his father. But you know what? Patience does run out. If you know the end of this, at the end of Ezekiel and the end of Jeremiah, they're attacked by a northern army and the nation is completely destroyed. They're taken into captivity. That's where Daniel did his writing, was from captivity, because all this that Jeremiah said did come to pass. And you know what? As we warn people and we say you need to trust the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to see, seek him while he may be found, and that blank stare comes up, just keep telling them. Just keep preaching them. Just keep telling them of the goodness of God. And you know what? It's not your responsibility to save them. It's your responsibility simply to give them the gospel. That's all we have to do. And so we see in the very same way, he says, they look like this girdle. It's good for nothing. I'm done with them. And the whole house of Judah saith, saith the Lord and the people be unto me for a people and for a name and for a praise and for a glory. And, and they would not hear. Are you doing those things? Are you praising him? Are you lifting him up? That's for you to answer, not for me. Verse 12, Therefore thou shalt speak unto them this word, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Every bottle shall be filled with wine, and they shall say unto thee, Do we not certainly know that every bottle shall be filled with wine? Now, I want you to see that God's plan of judgment was like this. I'm going to fill all the bottles up with wine. Now, there is nothing innately wrong about wine. <laughs> it's how you use it, <laughs> right? It's what you do with it. You know, uh, at the marriage of Cana of Galilee, what did the Lord Jesus turn the water into? Grape juice? <laughs> no. He turned it into wine. And the reason, you know what happened to water and grape juice in such a nasty place? It was putrefied, you couldn't, you couldn't drink it. It was nasty, it would give, make you sick. And so he turned it into wine. Very same way, this wine was, would have been good used in the right way. Most of the stuff that we have, that we possess, and that we own, 
is wonderful if we use it in the right way. Now, nine times out of ten, we don't have the self-control to do that. Your TV, your this thing that holds the whole world together these days, that could be used for God's good if we will. But then we want to know, oh, ain't Sally's running around again with Uncle Tom, right? And then we have to put in our consents, right? That's not where we ought to be. Very same thing. It's not that it was innately bad. It wasn't being used for the right purposes. And so he says, I'm going to let every one of you get drunk, and I'm going to destroy the nation in your drunkenness with the wine that I prepared. <laughs> that's the God of the Bible. And, and so that's exactly what he did. Verse 16, and we're going to close. Give glory to the Lord your God. Think about that. Have you done that today? Give glory to the Lord your God. How are you going to do that? You know, uh, we, on one extreme, we have the modern-day Pentecostals with their rock concerts from the 80s, and on the other extreme, we have us. Amen. Right? He must have You know, a lot of them, it's just mad. They can't even put enough A in it. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think we praise him enough, do you? He says, give glory to God. <clears throat> we don't do that. We don't lift up his name. I don't know if we're afraid we're going to be branded as a Pentecost or what. But we don't glorify him as we should. What does the Bible say? And, and you, don't, you don't find this almost at all. He said, I would that the man everywhere lift up holy hands. That's in Thessalonians. What do you think of this? You went into a good, solid Baptist church and, well, praise the Lord. They, that might be your last trip, right? And, and, and so we see that certainly we're not following the standard and we'll find that as the day approaches, we need to be more and more about the, the Father's business. Give glory to the Lord your God before he calls darkness. Now, the darkness is here, folks. I, I personally believe in the United States. We were already been captured. Now, we have an independent state for right now, but as you can see, Israel wasn't still an independent state, but they'd already been captured by the world. We're, we're still a sovereign nation for now. Now, with Biden doing the junk he's doing, I don't know how much longer it's going to last, but... Anyway, we have it for now, but only in name. We are a nation bound unbelievably to sin. That's where we've arrived in 2022. Fully given over. And so he says, in your situation, continue. In your time of difficulty, keep going. Give glory to the Lord your God before he calls darkness and before your feet stumbleth. Now, when I was a boy in the late 70s, early 80s, we, we still lived at Carlisle, and it shows you how long ago the first church that got a paved, a paved parking lot back home was the Free Wheelers. They had a nice building, too. And it was nice and paved, and me and the boys would go down there with our skateboards. And we would skate around the free little parking lot. And uh, it had a little handicap ramp, and you could ride that dude up on the porch and turn around and go back. I wasn't that good, but there were some boys that could. And it was a, it was a, an attraction to us. It, 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 it drawn us in there. It, it made us uh, go to that place. And we, we lived in a day very much like that where we're just attracted and pulled. But he, <laughs> we's down there all the time. But Mama always said, Larry, when that yard light comes on, we didn't have street lights in Carlisle because it was just a bunch of houses in the same place. But we did have yard lights. And she said, when the free will light comes on, you're to be home. In other words, boy, be home before dark. 
And you know what? Nine times out of ten, I did. Uh, I'd see that light come on, I'd pick up my board, and I'd take off walking. Because I knew we need to be. You know what? We live in a day and age where people don't know that. We really do. Where, where they don't realize the danger that's out there. Now, unfortunately, as I got older, we moved to Cohen City, and Mama would scare you to death. Well, she used to sit with an old lady. Her name was Miss Mary Watts. And, man, she made me go over there with her. I despised that. That's the only way I got good grades in school, though, because the only thing to do with her was to look at your books. Uh, and uh, then we'd walk home. We didn't have an automobile. It's hard to believe that now. We didn't have a, me, me and Donna had two vehicles apiece and Sarah had one. Uh, three vehicles, uh, five vehicles for three people. That's stupid, right? We, we didn't even have one car. And so we was about three blocks from Miss Mary. we walk home and she'd tell me, well, you better be careful out here in this dark. Don't let her by yourself. I want to say, well, mother, what are you going to do about it? She's about this big. And but I didn't tell her that. And, we walked home and we never had any problem. We always made it. Then we got a car. It's pretty much the same thing. Then the dark didn't bother me no more. I began to run around with some friends and we'd go to Wooten's pool hall and we'd take the car down there and all my buddies had cars too. We'd get in about two or three in the morning. But you know what? The darkness was still bad. I should have been home before dark. Mm -hmm. If we're out in the world, you need to be home before dark. Think about the reality, the truthfulness. When, when we're amazed, it's enough. Come up here. And we fly to the, to the next part of the, of the journey. How real is that to you? I don't know if it's as real as it should be. I think if it was, we'd get excited when we saw clouds in the east. <laughs> this might be the cloud he's coming back on. But is that the reality for us in the modern day? I'm not, I'm not sure it is. I want to be home before dark. You know what? I want to be serving him in some capacity. If I'm old and, and bed confined and all I have left to do is to pray, I want to be doing something when the Lord comes and you. I want to be home before dark. Mm -hmm. I want to be doing what the Lord would have me to do. <laughs> you remember the plague of great darkness in the book of Exodus? It's described as a darkness that can be felt. And it said, in the home of the Jews, there was light. Isn't that the way it ought to be? They were enjoying a regular day. And Egypt, it says this, Egypt didn't move for three days. That's how dark it was. I want to be home before dark. What about you?